Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I got a question from a Christian who said to me, I am not a person who have a lot of knowledge, and I don't have patience to debate Muslims. And he asked me not to mention his name, so we will keep his wish. How I can prove to the Muslims and refute them in very short way that the gospel is not corrupted. And I decided to make a very short video to do that. So we don't want to waste our time. Let us prove to the Muslims that what they are saying to us is very funny and very stupid. Number one, as you see in the screen, the Muslims, when they talk about the gospel and the Torah, they are corrupt. They are talking about the book of their God. So I want you to put that in your consideration. And right away, when the Muslim says to you that the Torah and the Bible are corrupt, you answer him right away saying, you mean the Torah of Allah and the gospel of Allah are corrupt. So what is my problem? This is number one. Because the Muslim, when he makes such an accusation, he is just shooting in the head of his God. For this is the gospel of Allah, and Allah should be responsible for protecting his book, not a human being who die and rotten in the grave. The person who is eternal, he should preserve his eternal word, not the human. So when the Muslim, he say that the gospel and the Torah, they are corrupt, they are forgotten, a very important thing that the Quran confirm that those are the book of Allah, which mean it is the responsibility of their foolish God to protect that book. And if he could not do so, this is not our problem. This is number one. Number two, in the Quran, we have tons of verses proving that the Bible and the Torah are not corrupt. But before we go there, let us show the Muslims that the Torah and the Gospel are the Book of Allah, as we mentioned. If you go in the Quran, you will see tons of verses mentioning that. As an example, just to make it short, chapter 5, verse number 46, where it says that Allah, He sent the Torah and He sent the Injil. He sent the Torah and the Injil. All right. So the Quran confirmed that this is the book which is sent by Allah, and this is a book which is the book of Allah. And the Muslims, he worked hard to prove to me that his God simply cannot protect his book. So what is my problem? Obviously, this God, he is a fake God. Because he should be the one who care for his book, not a human being. A human being already is known to be corrupt and to be a sinner. A human being needs salvation. This is why a human need to need to to pray to God and need to worship God and need to appeal to God to forgive him. So how you give the human being a book, and you don't want to protect the book? When you know that the human being is a sinner and he is not trustworthy, starting from Adam ending with every one of us so it's a very stupid argument muslims they cannot get away with it if you ask them that question same time if you go in the quran you will find that the quran always speak about something very uh very weird and kind of uh, very, uh, let us say, uh, 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 sometimes beyond imagination. When the Quran speak about the Torah and the Bible, we will notice that the Torah and the Bible confirmed in the Quran all over. وَأَلْزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ and we sent you the book confirming what is between your book, between your hands. However, the Muslims, they can play with this and they say, oh, he is talking about confirming what was with them at that time. Well, you know, like not that, not the Bible today. So we are going to show them 
instead of showing those verses, we are going to show them different verse. ولما جاءهم كتاب من عند الله مصدقا لما معهم. And when a book he came from Allah, confirming what is with them. What is what? What is with them? مصدقا لما معهم. What is what is مصدقا لما معهم mean? And this is this is repeated in the Quran and all those verses. ولما جاءهم رسول الله من عند الله رسول من عند الله مصدقا لما معهم a group of the people of the book hmm, rejected but it says it clearly that when Allah he sent a messenger who confirm what is with them what is with them not what was with them as they show you in the translation muslims they lie when they translate lima ma'ahum is a word mean to what is with them not was with them you cannot trust a muslim translation ever but the muslims in order to cover this issue here this weakness in the quran they translate it is as to what what was with them, but where in the world the word was coming from? If we change the translation, you will see verifying that which they have. What you see how the translation changed? And when there come to them an apostle from Allah verifying that which they have, which they have. At that moment at that time the Muslims in order to get away the only game they play is to change the translation hoping that you will not meet somebody who speak Arabic read with me carefully and when there comes into them a messenger from Allah confirming that which they possess They possess. It's confirming what they possess. I mean, how clear we can make it more than this. The debate is over. Same time, we can go and we can check the interpretation for the Muslims to see what the interpretation will say. And the Muslims right away, they will try. You see, I put... I put uh, I put a timer. Sorry for that. I put a timer for five minutes and look like my five minutes is over. <laughs> it, it, the, the five minute is over very fast. Let me show you something else as long as the five minute is over because I'm trying to keep it in the five minute. If you go in the hadith, you will see that Muhammad, when he went to the Jews, and the Jews actually they ask him to judge. In about adultery, about fornication, to see how much he knew. Muhammad, he told them, "Well, you know what? It is written in the Quran, written in the Torah. So let me, let me, let, let us, let us read in the in the Torah what it says." And then he called the uh, the Jews to bring the Torah. And Muhammad, he decided to take an oath on the Torah. And to swear by the Torah. Read with me what Muhammad said. Muhammad, he said, Bring me the Torah. Read carefully. A group of the Jews come to him and invited the Messenger of Allah uh, uh, to a place so he can be a judge between them. It's about a woman committed fornication, a man and a woman committed fornication. So they pronounce judgment upon them. They place a caution for the messenger, the cushion for the messenger of Allah, who sat on it and said, and he said, Bring the Torah. It was then brought. He then would draw the cushion from beneath him and place the Torah 
on it saying I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee if you ask a Christian prince Christian prince are you willing to take an oath on the Quran I will say over my dead body why Christian prince because I don't accept the Quran to be the book of God as simple as that Additional to that, I'm as a Christian, I should not take an oath. I should say yay, yeah, yay, yeah, or nay, nay. However, I will not accept in no way, in no time, even to think about it, to discuss, or even to take an oath in a book like the Quran, which is not approved by me to be the book of God. If Muhammad and the Muslims consider the book of the, the Torah is corrupt in this case. It was the Torah how Muhammad he swear by the Torah saying I believe in thee and the one who sent thee Unless he is a corrupt man the man who believe and swear by a book which is corrupt He must be corrupt too. So here in the front of you we can find very simple solution how to refute a Muslim that the Bible is not corrupt. First, number one, you say to the Muslim that the Quran confirm that this is the book of Allah sent by Allah, and we mention to you verses. Then you mention for them chapter two, verse number one o one, which it says that it's confirm what they have with them, what they possess, what they possess, not what they used to have, as you see confirming that which they possess and if you go to the interpretation you will see right away that is speaking about muhammad and then the debate is over this is how you can beat them easy and you can find how you can show them that what they say is a stupid and just to show you we are not making things up if we go to the interpretation for the quran chapter 2 verse 101 by ibn abbas abbas which is the cousin of muhammad it says when there comes into them a messenger from Allah confirming that which they possess of the book. Do you see it? How you can confirm what they possess if it is corrupt. And this is a during the lifetime of Muhammad. I hope I gave you the answer. If you like to learn more about Islam, Please feel free, go to Amazon.com and type my name and you will see the list of my books there if you like to have handy reference so you can expose this cult easy and fast. And, you know, there's no Muslim can really debate you if you learn those books. Feel free to download my video and share it with all your friends. And this is how easy it is to defeat the cult of Islam. Thank you very much for watching. May the Lord bless you all. And remember always, Christ, his name is a glorious, even in Islam. Even in Islam, there is nobody there to call himself Christ. But everybody can call himself Muhammad. Nobody can call himself Allah. Nobody can call himself Christ in Islam. For Christ is the mighty God of Islam. But the Muslims trying to run away from the truth. Muhammad, he was a fake prophet. Who confirmed that Jesus is God even though he is a false man but because he is a false man he had no choice but to use the truth so he can deceive you so he used the name the glorious name of Jesus to deceive you he used the glorious name of the of the Bible to deceive you he used the great names like Musa, Abraham Isaac to deceive you people who want to put poison in your dish they put it in the favorite dish you eat not in the one you hate and this is what islam is about it's a poison but we know how to fight such a snake thank you and may the lord bless you all take care